let's start with the first one. Should we use an agent or not? So do you know sports agents? So let's assume you are a baseball superstar. Do you play baseball? Do you play baseball? Sometimes. Are you a superstar? Do you play baseball? So let's assume then that you are a baseball superstar, right? Or everybody is. So you just graduated from college, so say from the form, and you're ready to negotiate a contract with a professional team. If you hire an agent, you're going to have to pay the agent 3% of your money, your earnings in the future. So maybe you could just, your family or your friends could help you in the negotiation, right? So the question is, should you negotiate with an agent or should you negotiate on your own with some help from your family or friends? What are the, fact what are the factors you should consider? Okay, so discuss with your partner. What factors are you going to consider? What things are you going to consider when you're deciding whether to use an agent or not in the negotiation? Knowledge, knowledge of the agent. Okay. Anything else? Contribution. If we contract a protein, the agent is very well known to our 
Close contact options. The day is well known. Experience, right? Because they even have experience. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay, so first of all, is the agent a better negotiator than you? Maybe at the end of the course of negotiation you could be a good negotiator, right? Number two, does the agent have more experience in negotiating the issues than you? Then they, they might be better in that situation. Does the negotiation involve a technical matter? Okay, such as a law like we need a lawyer. There's some very complicated legal thing in the contract. So we need a lawyer to help us to do that. Okay. How much time do you have? I spoke before about an American guy called James Quack. He's a professor in the US. And for his time, he always accounts for his time if he's doing something. Okay. So if he, is he going to work on something in his house? No, because he, he values his time, let's say, at $50 an hour. And he can pay somebody to fix something in his house, just $20 an hour. Okay? So he values his time as $50 an hour. So he thinks it's better to pay somebody to come to his house and fix the thing. It costs just $20 an hour to pay the man. Okay? So this kind of question. Do we have the time? How much is our time worth? Is it better to pay an agent or a lawyer instead? Okay. Number five, what's our relationship with the other side? Perhaps we don't have a good relationship, then agent might be better. Okay. If we have a very good relationship, maybe we can don't need an agent. Okay. So we have to think about those factors. So most business most businesses use agents when they're doing negotiations. Many businesses use lawyers right, for negotiations. <coughs> and the next question is about secret agents. Do you know any secret agent? This means spy. Hmm? This means spy. Secret agent. Can also mean the spy. Not in this case, but secret agent also means spy. Who's a famous secret agent? James Bond. James Bond, right? There's a new movie out now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So is this exciting? Part of the course? <laughs> Talking about secret agents? Hmm? So, companies simply they don't want the other side to know that they are behind the deal. Okay? So, if, if we don't have to let them know. They can try to find out, but we don't have to let them know that we are behind the deal. Okay? So, we gave the example that you found gold on your grandfather's farm, right? Now suddenly, you want to buy your grandfather's farm, right? And your grandfather knows that you are doing some testing on the field. He saw you with the equipment, right? Testing for gold. So if you come to your grandfather and say, I want to buy the farm, maybe he'll be suspicious. Ah, he was out in the farm testing with all the equipment last week. Maybe he found gold, okay? So what could you do instead? <coughs> instead of directly asking your grandfather to sell you the farm, what could you do? Hint is the title of this slide. Secret agent. Hmm? Use secret agent. Use a secret agent. What would be a secret agent in that case? Who could you get to be your secret agent? Father's farm. Farm. Employee. Father's farm, farm employee. Some employee of the farm? Yes. You can just get the local boot on sand, it's easier. Uh -huh. Why would you go? You don't have to be that complicated, right? You don't have to find a spy. Just to get some lo local boot on sand to call your grandfather and ask him to sell the farm to them. Okay? Maybe your grandfather will ask them, well, who's the buyer? And the boot on sand will say, well, I can't tell you who the buyer is. All I can do is tell you what they're willing to offer. <coughs> do you understand? Yes. Then, uh, is that fraud? Mm -hmm. 
your grandfather can decide whether to sell his land or not. Okay? You don't have the responsibility to tell him he has gold on his land. Okay? Legally. Maybe it's not very nice, but legally it's not officially a problem, right? So what, do you know Walt Disney? Yes. Do you like Disney movies? Oh, yes. Who's your favorite Disney princess? Uh, oh. Elsa? Elsa? Why? Oh, because I'm very interested in watching... You like her dress? No. <laughs> I watched a movie in theater called Frozen World. A Frozen. A Frozen. I'm very interested in their song and their action. Oh, okay. I'm very interested in the singer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you like other Disney princesses too? Mila? Yeah. I, when I... Her hairstyle? Uh, when, when, like her when hair? I chop young, mm -hmm. I watch the Mila. She is very uh, brave, brave and very... Do you like her fashion? <laughs> her dress and her hairstyle? Uh, no. <laughs> She's very brave. Usually in the Disney movie, the girl is very brave, right? And she overcomes all the adversity against her, right? Kind of story. So anyway, Walt Disney wanted to make a theme park. Do you understand the theme park? Yes. So, <coughs> he had needed to buy this much land. Do you understand an acre? Yes. Acre is a measurement of land. So he wanted to buy 27,000 acres. So I guess it's bigger than Everland. So, if people knew that Walt Disney was buying the land, what are they going to do? They want um, more money to buy a uh, selling the Disney. They want to increase the price, right? They know Walt Disney needs to buy all the land. He can't buy all this land and have one piece in the middle that he can't buy, <laughs> right? So, he, he's prepared to pay a very high price. So he hired an army of secret agents, and he made even secret company. He made a company with an office address, different office addresses, to register the land was sold to this company, okay? And the land was sold to this company, and he hired a lot of lawyers and real estate agents, different ones, to buy up all the land in the area. Okay? So just at the very end, people found out that he was behind the purchase, that Walt Disney was buying the land. Property prices skyrocket from he bought it at $183 an acre, but at the end it was $1,000 an acre. Wow. So price went up a lot. Is it, legal? Is, it legal? Is it legal? Yes, of course. You don't have to say the agent can tell you I'm buying the land on behalf of this company, right? Or this thing. Or they might tell you. I'm just, I have an offer, this person wants to buy your land, but I'm not telling you their name, okay? And you can decide, you can say no, no deal. I want to know who the person is I'm selling the land to, or else I'm not making a deal, okay? So probably that's the reason he made some company, right? So that he could tell some people who said no, I want to know who I'm selling the land to, or you're selling the land to this company, okay? So he even made some companies. <coughs> so it may, just you have to decide. Like this case with Walt Disney, you may have to not tell, not make it known that you are buying up all the land. A very similar one is for mining company. You know mining company? Yes. It's quite obvious that the mining company found some gold or silver in the land. They start buying all the land around. Okay? Of course, they don't want people to know the mining company is buying the land. Okay? Everybody is going to increase the price, or they won't sell it. They'll mine it themselves, or the oil company, or that kind of thing. <clears throat> so then the next question is, what is the first question you should ask in any negotiation? So discuss with your partner.
Anything from you? What do you think? What are your interests? We can ask that, but what are we studying about now? What topic are we studying? <laughs> do you have agents? Hmm? Do you have an agent? <laughs> but they're negotiating with you, they're going to be the agent. Does the agent have you're asking them do you, if they have an if the agent has an agent? <laughs> So, we should ask them, they are the agent, so we ask them, do you have authority from the principal to do the deal? Okay? First of all, are you the principal? You know if they're the principal or not. Do you understand principal? Principal means the main person doing the deal. Walt Disney is the principal. Okay? So Walt Disney sends his agent. You have to ask the agent, do you have authority to do the deal? Right? Or find out from the principal, does the agent have the authority? Why? You might go into great details in the negotiation with the agent and make a great deal, you think it's a great deal. But then at the very end, the agent might say, oh, sorry, I have to check with my boss. Okay? So you might feel like you wasted your time. Then they check with their boss and it comes back. No, no, you can't have the deal. Right? And you spent a lot of time making the deal, very detailed way. So, to avoid that problem, very first you have to find out. Am I just talking with you to make a rough deal that we can propose to your boss and later make the detail? Or, do you, can you today, can you sign the contract and finish everything? Okay, so does the agent have authority? So, if they go back and their, their principal says no, then you have to start again, from scratch. Okay. You may have wasted your time. So we have different types of authority that agents have. The first one is express. Express is like implicit, explicit. Do you know implicit and explicit? Express is similar. Explicit means it's very clear. So in this case, Walt Disney tells the agent, you have the authority. So it's clear. You ask Walt Disney, does your agent have authority? He said, yes, they have authority. They can make the deal. Second one is employ, implied authority, implicit. It means the principal hired the agent, like international marketing job. Okay, you are hired in the international sales team for the company. You're an agent for the company, even though you're an employee. Okay, so it means that you have the authority to make the deal. Okay, because you are working in the international sales department. Okay, we can understand you have the authority to make the deal. And then the last one is more complicated, apparent authority. So in this case, the principle indicates somehow that the agent has authority. When there is no authority, the principle doesn't mean that the agent should have authority. They don't want the agent to have authority. But maybe they made a mistake and they indicated to me that the agent has authority. So in this case, there can be some litigation. Okay, people have a dispute. So let's look at an example. There's a question. So a company hired an agent called Lee to negotiate with a manufacturer. The company gave the manufacturer a letter of authority. So the company gave the manufacturer a letter saying, Lee has the authority to make the deal. The company said, Lee is our authorized agent. But privately to Lee, the company said, Mr. Lee, you can acquire equipment, but you are not authorized to pay over 30, 300 per unit. Do you understand, Mr. Lee? Do you understand? You are not authorized to pay over 300 a unit. Do you understand? Okay, we're buying equipment. Okay, the company gave you a letter to say you have the authority to make a deal. Okay, but then they gave this letter to the other company. You have the authority to make a deal. But then they tell you privately, don't buy for more than 300. Okay, are you going to pay more than 300? The company told you don't. Are you going to pay more than 300 for the equipment? No, but you did. Right? This is the reservation price. You cannot pay over 300. So you start negotiating with the manufacturer. 
and as it turns out, you decide to pay 400. Okay? You paid 400 for each unit. Doesn't matter. Let's say it's a printer. Okay? 400 for a printer. Each printer. So now there's a contract. You signed a contract. Okay? But the company refused to honor the contract. The company says, no. No, we don't agree. We're not making the contract. So this case went to court. So what do you think the court decided? Is the company bound by the contract or not? Does the company, he signed the contract, the company gave a letter of authority to him, okay? But they told him, don't pay more than 300, but he paid 400, and now the company doesn't want to pay, so the manufacturer takes the company to court, to litigation. You have to pay me 400 for each unit. You have to keep the contract. Who do you think wins? Discuss with your partner. Who won the case? Do they have to pay the 400 for the contract or can they say no? We don't agree. Anybody think they can't cancel the contract? Everybody thinks they can cancel the contract? Hmm? Did Mr. Lee have authority or not to make a deal from the company? Yes. He has authority. So can they cancel the contract or can't cancel the contract? He may he signed the contract. But the company don't want to pay over three hundred or four million. Yes, but you made a contract, you already signed, you can't change your mind. I sign a contract to buy a house, and I say, oh, I'm sorry, I changed my mind, I'm not going to buy the house. <laughs> Can I do that? Contract has been signed, the house is already in my name. Right? The only way I can do that is if there was some problem, some false thing. Okay, like he didn't have the authority. But... The company gave the manufacturer a letter of authority. So it's clear that he had authority. Okay? This is apparent authority. A little bit more confusing. Okay? So by giving the manufacturer the letter of authority, saying Lee had authority to represent the company, the company created a situation where it appeared that Lee did have the authority. Okay? 
It appeared apparent authority. It appeared like he had the authority. So the manufacturer has to be able to rely on this, that you're not wasting their time. Okay? They have to be able to rely on the fact that this guy can make the final agreement because of that letter sent by the company. Even if the company didn't mean that he has the authority, they sent a letter, so the company is liable. They have to pay for the contract. So let's look at the next question about the apparent authority. Yes? The company, uh, there is a possibility to, possibility the company should leave? Uh, no, because they already gave the letter of authority. They made a the company made a mistake, not leave. Okay? Maybe they're not happy with him, and the next time his contract comes up next year, they're not going to renew his contract because he didn't do what he was told. They, they're not going to sue him. Just, ah, he didn't do what he was told. Right. So, uh, next one. A borrower with no collateral. Do you understand collateral? Collateral means a house or a car or money. So a borrower has no nothing. And they want a loan, a personal loan. They want to go on holidays to Hawaii. They want $20,000 okay, to go on holidays to Hawaii. Do you want to go on holidays to Hawaii? Yes. Why? So they go to the bank and the banker says, but you have no collateral. If you don't pay back the loan, I can't get back any money. So it's too risky. So the person says, well, I have a good job. So I can ask the general manager at my work if he will sign a guarantee on behalf of the company. It means that the company will pay back my loan if I don't pay back my loan. Okay? Some companies help people for getting houses, right? Like the US Army will sign a guarantee for the mortgage, for people's mortgage, right? Sometimes. So the company will guarantee the loan. Do you understand guarantee? Yes. You're, usually the pa your parents have to guarantee. If you get a loan, your parents have to guarantee the loan. If you don't pay back, they have to pay back. Right? So what would you do as the banker in this case? Okay. Are you satisfied if the borrower doesn't repay the loan, you can get the money back from the company? Discuss with your partner. So the, some just general manager just means not the CEO, right? Just some manager from the company is going to sign the document to say the company guarantees the loan. You are the bank manager. Are you going to accept this guarantee? Are you satisfied that the company will pay you back? That this is this contract is okay? That the general manager has authority or not? So discuss with your partner. main question here is, does the, gen the general manager is going to sign a guarantee on behalf of the company? Is this guarantee a real guarantee? Does the general manager have authority to do that or not? accept this letter from the general manager in the company guaranteeing the loan or not? Are you going to give the loan or not? No. No, why not? Do you think this letter is not going to be legally uh, used or not? Okay. So, 
this also was a litigation case, they found the company was not liable. Why? General managers have no authority to guarantee loans. Okay? Part of a sales, if you're working in international marketing for a company or sales, it's part of your job to make contracts. Okay? Is it part of a general manager's job to guarantee loans for employees? No, it's not. It's not part of their job description. Okay? It's not part of their job. So they don't have any of these authorities, right? They don't have express authority. The company didn't tell them they could do that. They don't have employed authority. Their position is not relevant for this. Okay? And they don't have a, there's no apparent authority. So no. This letter is not was not okay and the bank lost the money. Okay? So the bank should have asked the company at the start. Does the general manager have authority to do this or not? Okay? Or the person working in the bank should have talked to themselves. Does the general manager have the authority to guarantee loans or not? Then they would have said probably not. Okay? So just to sum up on agents, we need to check the five factors before deciding if we are going to use an agent or not. Okay? Is it appropriate to use a secret agent or not? In some cases we may need to use a secret agent. Okay? This is the main point. Do not assume the other side has full authority just because they are negotiating with you. Sometimes we don't know if they're an agent. We can ask them, are you an agent? Right? Do you have, are you an agent? Do you have authority? And actually it's better to add, not ask the agent, ask the principal. Okay? Because if I ask the general manager in the bank, I might ask the general manager, do you have authority to guarantee loans? The general manager might say to me, yes. Am I going to win in court? No. Oh, yes. Why? Because the general manager of the No, the general manager is not the company. The company is the one who has to pay the money, not the general manager. Right? So even though the general manager told me, yes, I have authority, I can't believe him or her. Okay? They're not paying back the money. It's the company who's paying, is the principal. They are just the agent. So I have to check with the principal. Ask the company. Does the general manager have authority to do this? Okay? So we could ask the agent, do you have authority to do this? The agent could be wrong. So even better, ask the principal. How much authority does the agent have? Does the agent have authority to do this or do that? Okay? When we are negotiating with an agent. Otherwise we can end up wasting time and getting caught out if we get the false information. So then, uh, let's finish there for today. If you have any questions about your test, you can ask me at the end of the